This is Susan Bassey, and last year we exposed a secret judge club where lawyers, judges, and police officers, and private business owners were meeting in secret. They were holding their meetings at public expense, but off record, and we don't get to know what was said. And when that happens, that suppresses speech, or chills speech, and I'm going to show you why that's important. What's that? Why you take your camera? I'm sorry? Why you want to take your camera? What are you? You can't take it. What did you just say? You can't take it now. You just said I can't do this? Yeah, because... What are you? And just as we're growing accustomed to asking police officers for their name and their badge numbers, we run across the contractors. Contractors who are now being paid in place of police officers to provide security for the courts. And this is similar to attorneys who are contracted with the courts to either provide legal representation in a criminal case or, as Arthur Lynn does, to provide legal services to children whose parents are involved in a divorce or custody case. Uh, security services, you contract with the court? What's your name? What's your name? I don't have to give you my name, sir. John. Yeah, go ahead, get John. You want to take the camera? Do you want me to explain the First Amendment to you, yeah, sir? Go ahead, you ask him, because he has policies and procedures related to post training. When the government uses private contractors, it could include private police officers or attorneys. And the distinction between those contractors and employees for the courts is that we don't get to know how much those contractors make or how they're going about doing their job. What's your name and badge number, please? My name and badge number? Yes. 1539 Bassett. B-A-S-S-E-T-T. -S -S -E What's your first name? Deputy. When somebody working for the government doesn't like your speech, they still go about doing their job, and we have a right to watch them. That doesn't mean they have to like us or invite us to their special clubs. So when John here is hanging out with the contractor at the front of the door at the Bar Bench Media Police Committee, and that's happening on the public dime, we have a right to know everything they do and everything they say, because that's a conflict of interest, which we see far too often with judges and attorneys, and it's not disclosed. Since attorneys and others work inside that courthouse where cameras are not allowed, I decided to take my camera outside, and I was a little surprised at how curious people were that I was recording when they had passed lots of signs along the way, letting them know that when they're in public, there is no expectation of privacy. Filming us? Yes. Why? And the people not bothered by my recording in public had something to say. Most of them were not invited to the Bar Bench Media Police Committee and they knew something didn't feel right. Circle back around you. What I'm gonna do right now, watch how I'm filming this. Stay right where you are. I'm filming this guy, watch me. You're to my back, right? I'm filming him. Looks like an attorney, wearing a suit, got his stuff. And I never put you in my video. Did you see how I did that? Now I'm gonna circle back around and you're gonna show me the video, okay? Put, put it out. Most of us intuitively understand the First Amendment. We understand it gives us the right to speak up about our opinions, our views, and ideas. It gives us the right to seek redress of our grievances with the government, and that includes people working for the government, like our elected officials, the district attorneys, the sheriff, the supervisors in your local county, or the mayor in your local city. It gives you the right to write letters, to give public comment, and to associate with those that you want to associate with. But few people have a great understanding about the free press and what that means. Because basically, as a member of the press, you're just a member of the public. 
you have a little more training and experience in news gathering. That means requesting public records, making public comment, or standing outside a public courthouse and recording in public and asking people questions. Questions that the government can't restrain. Questions that may give you answers and places to look for more information. Because the job of the free press is simply to provide information to the public. And the business of the free press is the only business protected under the United States Constitution. So when Santa Clara County created a judge club where they decided who they were going to invite and which reporters were worthy of attending, they violated the First Amendment rights of every person who had a right to receive information from the reporters who were not invited. How are you guys? Good, good. My name is Susan Bassey. I'm a cop watcher and I'm watching the Dirty DAs right oh, now. Thank you. I love watching yes. Susan, sign up on my YouTube channel and TikTok, guys. Tainted trials, Tarner's headlines, stolen justice. Watch what we're going to do. Wait, did you really just say that to me? Are you an actual attorney that said, I need to ask permission to record in public? Where'd you go to law school? Yeah. We're paying you with tax dollars? I hope not. Hi, Sajid. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? This is Sajid Khan, and he's an employee of the Santa Clara County Public Defender's Office. He works inside those courthouses, but he also ran for district attorney in 2022. According to the records that we obtained, Sajid Khan never attended those meetings. He never had an ability to sit with the reporters who were covering the election, but his opponent, the district attorney, Jeff Rosen, did. Jeff Rosen sat in those meetings, and so did Sajid Khan's boss, Damian Silver. Damian Silver is the government attorney who was captured on video by San Joaquin Valley Transparency long before that election ever took place. And we can see in that video Damian Silver's views, opinions, and ideas about public recording. And he would have been able to express those views, opinions, and ideas during those secret judge meetings where he was invited to be a speaker. After we discovered the Secret Judge Club, I wrote to the Internal Affairs Unit of the California Supreme Court, and I asked them to have their ethics department consider whether or not this club was ethical. I also asked for them to consider whether or not it was legal, and they told me that I didn't have standing, that an opinion could only be requested by a sitting or a retired judge, but then they went ahead and issued a draft opinion anyway, and when they did that, they circulated it throughout the legal community and to the public public, giving everybody an opportunity to make public comment about their views, opinions, and ideas of the draft. And everybody that did respond, the whole six or seven people, all agreed that the opinion was a good idea. Several judges said that no judges should be able to sit in secret committees, especially as it relates to hearing speakers involved in politics. But one attorney wrote a letter on behalf of the Sixth District Court of Appeal. And in that letter, they wrote their views and opinions and ideas about inviting speakers. They talked about how their court had used free speakers and that they had selected them to speak to hundreds of judges throughout the country and court staff as well. Then they talked about how judges could invite speakers that reflect societal norms, views, and ideas. They didn't talk about that the Supreme Court and the Sixth District Court of Appeal and the Trial Court are all supposed to address the law, not views, opinions, and ideas that they express in secret closed meetings. Because when judges are meeting with lawyers, 
police officers, and reporters, they're forming opinions. They're forming ideas about how they might rule in a case, about whether or not they might like one of the parties or the lawyers, and whether or not they're going to get reelected as a judge themselves. For those of you who've ever been involved in criminal court, either as a defendant or a victim, or you've been involved in a family law case, you may have felt that the judges and lawyers were all too chummy, and yet the law says they are required to make disclosures to us about their social, personal, and professional relationships. Sadly, too often do we find that judges do that according to the law, and lawyers are often too willing to take advantage of it in order to get a win, whether it's a win by getting somebody convicted of a crime or a win by getting somebody to get an unfair advantage in a divorce case. People. Why? Because I'm a journalist. Oh, what's the story? Lots of them. Tainted trials, tarnished headlines, stolen justice. Which? Tainted trials, tarnished headlines, Stolen Justice. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm Susan Bassey. Yeah, where do I find your article? David's Vanguard Online. Six series. We're going. We're going to 125 to match the first one. The prosecutors do not like me filming them. Aside, it's just journalism. Okay, yeah, but but the truth is important. T tainted trials, tarnished headlines. Tarnished headlines. Stolen justice. I got some stories for you. This is what news gathering looks like. It means going out and finding information, whether it's information provided to you from individuals, something that you might capture on your camera, or a comment that you might hear in a public setting. And when you put that information together, you disseminate it to the public. Not all information gets disseminated. Some of it is unpublished, and it is up to the job of the journalist to decide what will be written about, what will be told on video, and what will be edited out. It's not up to the judges to decide to be the editors of speech. It's not up to the judges to decide which speakers are credible and who they like, because when judges make those determinations, they are tainted, and they influence juries, they influence legal outcomes, and they even influence elections. For 30 years, the judges in Santa Clara County influenced the headlines, the legal outcomes, and how those elections turned out. It wasn't voting machines. It was judges sitting in these clubs, and they still don't want to acknowledge the harm that they've done to the public by chilling speech for over 30 years. On April 19th, we reported in the Davis Vanguard that Judge Towery, who had presided over the Secret Judge Club, was retiring, and the club was being shuttered, according to the officials at the Superior Court in Santa Clara County. And when we published that article, the California Supreme Court newsroom picked it up on their newsroom website and broadcasted it to the public. That broadcasting has since been taken down. And on June 19th, the California Supreme Court Ethics Committee ignored the six district's comments and issued a published decision saying that judges are not allowed to invite speakers to meetings where the rest of the public is not allowed to hear what is going on. They're not allowed to politic and they're not allowed to do exactly what that bar bench media police committee did here for over 30 years. Jessica Delgado was a member of the Public Defender's Office. She resides in Santa Cruz County, the home to Maya and Sebastian, and the issues related to private transportation companies and reunification businesses. Judge Delgado was recently presiding over a domestic violence case on July 20th, 2023. And in that case was a 17-year-old boy by the name of Will. And Will was allegedly seeking a restraining order against his mother. There was a young girl who was a friend of Will's, and she wanted to oversee the proceedings. She was an advocate for Will, and she was concerned about him. And so when she tried to access the proceedings, virtually, Judge Delgado denied her access and said that in order to get into her courtroom, she had to give her name. At 17 years old, having dealt with the foster care system and abuse issues not being reported herself, she decided not to attend the hearing. The influence that the Barbench Media Police Committee 
had on judges and on how we operate our courts continues today. Dear Fisher, me.